Welcome to Monday News number 41. As always, a bit quick, rough and dark. <laughs> uh, we're currently live from Eindhoven, which is the biggest bowling city in the world. No, no, the most people playing bowling. No, just a random sculpture of bowling pins. I don't know why. Anyway, so we got kicked out of our workspace and we're actually now leaving Eindhoven city, um, but also really leaving the Netherlands to move our workspace. And this is kind of a big thing. I mean, my entire life, I'm 31, I've lived in this region. Uh, around this city in a 20 kilometer radius. So I had my first workspace in an old butcher shop, my second one in Helmond in an old post office, and in the recent years here in Eindhoven in an old car factory. So I've always been around in this area, I know all the places. So I figured before I'll go, let me show you the best things about this place so that if you ever, for some reason, end up in this place, maybe because of a bowling event, you know where to go. So let me show you. Yeah, the scrapyard. And over here you can really find a lot of very useful things, but very properly sorted. So things for plumbing, screw bolts, nuts. Yeah, this is a good place. There's a super cool windmill, which I always think if you see that one in Amsterdam, it's gonna be super busy, tourists everywhere, they pay 20 euro, and here you can just walk in, buy your flower, and they mill it for you when the wind is blowing. There's a big blueberry farm where you can pick your own blueberries in July and August. So, almost there. Mm. And over there is the main city center with all the shops and stuff like that. But what is way more interesting is that there's always water here. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's always there. Fascinating. So originally Philips was made in this city, you know, from all the electronics parts and products. Uh, Mr. Philips right there, he started it. Um, but nowadays it's all outsourced to China. But in the old days a lot of people used to work here in factories, including my own grandpa used to work for Philips. Uh, but now you have a lot of old empty uh, factories. So here you have some of these old factories and now people are living in there. Let me show you. Hey. Hey. <laughs> cool. And the best thing about this area is this place right here where they sell the best dark chocolate ice cream and it's vegan and it's the darkest one you will ever have. <laughs> yeah. We have a bicycle path. Hey. And it glows in the dark. They have a very nice bouldering gym so you can go climbing. Now I see what you're thinking. You're in the Netherlands, Dave. Why do you do climbing? There are no mountains. Well, think different. Boom. One of the biggest mountains in the south of the Netherlands, right there. So here we are, one of the highest points of the region, 60 meters above sea level. <whistles> and fun fact, this is actually not a mountain, it's a man-made hill, because underneath all of this, there's trash. Uh, this used to be a landfill in the 80s, just like you see them nowadays in Asia or Africa, a place to dump our trash. But at some point we didn't like it anymore and we realized we preferred to see grass, so we sort of covered it up and now it is, yeah, sort of like a nice hill. Because we don't like to look at trash. So nowadays we just burn it or we send it to Asia or Africa that we don't have to take care of it. Yeah, we prefer to play golf. And then you have these things, which are very Dutch. They contain snacks. So you put in some coins, open it up, and you take a disgusting thing out. But what not many people know is you also have an underground version, Diagonaaltje Trekken. Which means you go diagonal and take a snack out of every box and you eat them all. It's very disgusting. So you probably end up throwing up somewhere in this party street. And yeah, then the night is completed. I mean, it's not a good tip, but it's culture. So these are basically all the tips and tricks on Eindhoven. But there's one last place I want to show you guys. And it's a bakery from a guy called Dito. And he used to give us her bread for free, uh, his leftover bread, during the development of version 4. And uh, it's probably the best bread in Eindhoven. And I want to show you guys this bakery and ask him why he did that. So let's check it out. Okay, um, could you explain a bit about your bakery and maybe how you started? So, how did it start? Uh, um, I. Uh I was working at Philips Design as a designer who said I need designing uh, lights, uh, luminaires for outdoor lighting, for streets, and for stadiums. 
And it was a very nice job, and I did it for 19 years in total before I resigned. But three years before I quit, I started baking home uh, bread at home. And uh, first just one bread, and that fucked it up. And uh, I wanted to find out how to do it better. And uh, yeah, from one thing came another. And then, <laughs> like in a half a year later, I was baking bread for friends and uh, people who got to know my bread. And like every Thursday, I would make dough and on Friday which was my day off at Philips I would uh, bake the bread in my uh, homemade uh, stone wood fired oven and uh, they could pick up the bread at uh, Friday afternoon and I liked it so much that I thought uh, let's let's write a business plan maybe I can uh, go uh, professional <laughs> so now you're a professional baker now I'm a professional baker cool. I guess <laughs> Could you explain something about your bread? Like, do you use uh, the ingredients you use, or where they come from, or is it why is it different than Albertijn bread? <laughs> yeah. So uh, the, the bread we make is uh, it's all sourdough bread, so we don't use yeast, commercial yeast. It's, uh, sourdough is uh, like a natural uh, yeasting process, and uh, all our ingredients are organic. And like normally in bread, there's like five, six, seven, eight ingredients, even more sometimes. And in our bread, it's three, which is water, flour, and salt. So that's how we bake the bread. And we don't think more is necessary, but we put more time in it and more effort. And that's how we still create very nice bread and time, a lot of time. So our bread's all proof overnight. This gives them a very good crust, it makes them easier to digest and more tasteful. Do you think you have the best bread of Eindhoven? Sure. <laughs> yeah. So we always got uh, bread from you, mm -hmm. or if we if we came at least. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how was that for you? Is it nice? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, yeah, yeah is it's it? really nice because uh, the, the problem with baking is uh, you don't bake on demand, so you try to estimate how much bread you need for a day, but it uh, doesn't always turn out uh, exactly right. And then when it's rainy, for example, and also because we bake. We start baking like two days in before we start planning what we bake for two days later. So we cannot really, we're not so flexible when the weather changes or something. So sometimes we have bread left over and then it's really nice if it goes to a place where people can really need it. And uh, yeah, in that way I was also supporting uh, precious plastics of course. Because they work with volunteers so they don't have so much budget and it's nice if then I can... It doesn't cost me anything actually. but. It does give a lot of value, I think. Cool. And then what do you do if your bread, if we wouldn't take it, where, where does it go? Is it... Uh, is it in the trash? time it ends in the bin. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. And you can bring it to this homeless shelter or something, or it doesn't work? Uh, no, it doesn't work. So there is the, the futsal bank, for example. And uh, they want you to, to bring it, wrap it in plastic, label it, uh, seal it. And everything and you have to bring it and so yeah after 12 hours of work in the bakery and then when I go to the <laughs> home the shelter to bring the bread mm. I was giving it to Salvation Army for a while they started complaining that they had to slice the bread themselves <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah so you know yeah sometimes people ask for it like when homeless people come here just by themselves and they ask for bread of course they get it mm. uh. Anything you want to mention to the YouTube world? YouTube world? Yes. Get a live. <laughs> Alright, so those are all the highlights of Eindhoven. Now I have some closure and I can leave. Because I'm going to focus big time on Project Camp in the coming months. And in Fresh Plastic we have a very solid team that actually came from version 4, so some people stick around. They're actually going to fully focus on starter kits for the time being. So this is something we released actually this month, it's a new thing. Because a lot of people always ask us, can you set up a workspace for me? But we never really do that. Um, but we figured maybe we should provide that service. So from now on, you can go to the website and select the starter kit and actually just buy it. And we'll take care of it, we fully make it. And we use the worldwide community of machine builders and people to actually set it up. So it's a very exciting new feature. So I would say go to the website to check it out. And the team itself is actually gonna go work from France because our old workspace manager, Jan, he had his old workspace available there and he said, you can come and work here, super nice. Um, so they drove back and forth a few times with all our machinery and tools from Precious Plastic and now installing the workspace. And it's a very cool place.
Say have a look. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the new Precious Plastic, plastic workspace, workspace in France. France. The workspace is located in the building behind me and we have a nice river over there. But yeah, we're still unpacking, so there's not much to see yet, but more coming soon. For now, let's go with Kat for the, the community news. Hey, welcome to the new community news reported from Kat, this time live from one of our Patreon supporters' houses, aka my mom. Thank you, mommy. Okay, well, let's dive right into it. First, a quick update on the platforms. We have two new how-tos, one from Pacific Beauty about uh, making all sorts of beam furniture for uh, outdoors. Um, and Zero Plastics Australia shared how they make plastic sheets with a very low budget and simple technique. For everyone who is not on Instagram, we also shared these super cool watches from Doba Studio. We talked about Thomas and Mark from our V4 team starting their sheet press uh, production and this super cool storage system from Bjorn from Iceland. So yeah, cool stuff. Then, very exciting sheet presses are coming so slowly we see the v4 sheet, sheet presses popping up here and there in iceland in germany in australia in south korea and maybe the first one in action in the netherlands from fiction factory so yeah looking forward to seeing some beautiful sheet material and products coming if you're building the sheet press or any of the other machines please do share when you're done and let us know how everything went and it if it was doable or what was challenging so that we can take this and learn and further improve and find modifications as a community. And probably the best place for that is our Discord. So as you probably know, we've been slowly shifting from the forums to the Discord um, as a place for the community to connect, exchange and discuss ideas and help each other. And it definitely has its advantages and um, is a very informative and, and inspiring place for the community. But we are also still figuring out how it can best serve the community's uh, topics and needs. Yeah, and there is a lot of space for improvement. Thank you for everyone who's contributing and sharing so much. And huge thank you for Nick, Dave and Frederick, our moderators who are really helping now to structure and improve and maintain the Discord so that it can be the most useful as possible for the community. And if you have any ideas or want to help with the Discord, um, please let us know, it's just shoot us, shoot us a message and um, then we can take it from there. And finally, we also shared the results from our impact survey we did in March. So here are a few of them. A total of 376,176 kilograms of plastic was recycled last year which per, per workspace accounts to um, nearly one ton of plastic recycled in that year. On average, a precious plastic workspace has a team of five people, one third of them being women, and one person on average um, being full-time and getting a salary. The yearly revenue was over 2.1 million euros, which for each workspace would be 606 euros per month. 10% of all surveyed workspaces are profitable and 21% are financially sustainable. Here it might be interesting to mention that nearly half of the workspaces just started less than a year ago, so they might still be in kind of a setup phase. There are a lot more numbers on the webpage we created for the impact survey, so if you're into numbers, check it out. Having a kind of overview and being in touch with a lot of people from the community, I would personally say that there is certainly much more going on. Um, there's many more machines, many more workspaces and people involved in plastic recycled. But it is a good reference to get as information from the community and provided some val valuable information for us, which helps us to get an idea and or a better idea and um, also to see where we could improve to um, increase this impact we can have as a community. So yeah, track your numbers and more to come. That's it for now. Take care of yourself, take care of others and see you next month.